from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Good evening and welcome to Open Line. I'm Emily Lux and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight we are talking politics. We are talking about the voting rights bill and other hot topics that are expected to go before Congress in 2022. We are excited to have a guest with us this evening, Dr. John Vile, a political science professor from MTSU. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so we will be covering a wide variety of topics. Of course, this is an hour-long show. We want to get you involved in that discussion as well. There will be a phone number at the bottom of your screen. You can give us a call anytime if you have any thoughts, comments, concerns. We know politics, people have strong opinions, so we would love to hear from you as we kind of go through various issues over the next hour. But please join in that discussion. We would love to hear from you. And before we get started, Dr. Vile, just tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been teaching at MTSU. This is my 33rd year, actually. I came in as chair of the political science department back in 1989, and in 2008, I became a dean of the University Honors College, which, of course, em embraces people in all different disciplines. Uh, those who graduate with us write a, write a thesis, so I do a lot of thesis writing uh, or reading, supervising, and then I do a lot of writing on my own as well. Well, we know you've been a guest on Open Line before. We thank you for that, and we thank yeah. you for being our political expert this evening as we get into a variety of topics here. And I want to start tonight with the voting rights bill, which, of course, died in the Senate last week. Kind of explain where we're at on that. Is it dead? Will it come back? What, what's the status? Some, some of this, of course, might depend on what happens in this year's midterm elections. You know, where all, the, all 435 members of the House of Representatives are up for election as are a third of the members of, of the Senate. Um, there's probably majority support for the voting rights bill, but as, as you know, uh, the Senate operates by the principle that, you know, the, fi the Senate f permits filibustering, people speaking as long as they want. And in order to close that off, you now need 60 votes. And of course, uh, there's, you know, basically a 50-50 split between Democrats and Republicans, and two of the Democrats, uh, or uh, two, two of the Democrats, were unwilling. I'm, I'm not so sure that they are opposed to the content of the Voting Rights Act itself, but you know, there's this. The filibuster is fairly long established in, in the United States. It's designed to protect minority rights. There have been times where the filibuster has been used. Uh, for example, to prevent anti-busing measures and measures that might be considered to be politically liberal. Um, what's not as well known, and there's been a, there was a great article on this in CNN a couple of days ago, is that the closure rule uh, was not always uh, 60 votes. In fact, it used to be 67, or basically two thirds, if every if everyone were present. And that was changed in the 1970s, largely as a result of the work of Walter Mondale, uh, the senator from Minnesota who later uh, ran, of course, for, uh, uh, ran for vice president. Uh, so the, the rule, the, the number 60 is not necessarily ensconced in stone, but, you know, if you, if you give it up for this, it's possible that the opposition will later give it up for something that you want. So, you, you know, the, the Senate is a very traditional body. Uh, you know, everyone, no matter what they think of their colleagues, they typically refer to them as their esteemed colleagues. Uh, you have more time for debate there than you do in the House, which is a much larger body. And so we're talking not only about voting rights, but also changing sort of Senate folkways. And there were kind of two portions of this as proposed, the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, as well as the Freedom to Vote Act. As it was initially proposed, what, what would this have done had it passed? Well, let, let me just say generally, and this won't work in every case, but generally Republicans do, if there are fewer people that vote, they tend to be those of higher income, uh, tend to probably be whiter than, than, than the general population and what. And they generally do better when voting is somewhat depressed. Democrats generally do better when poor, uh, darker people uh, are voting than, than, than would otherwise be. So each side sort of has an incentive. Uh, you know, the Constitution prevents, you, you can't keep somebody from voting on the basis of their race. 
You can't keep them from voting on the basis of their gender. You can't keep them from voting on the basis of their age as long as they're 18 or older. But the, the Constitution largely, you know, largely leaves voting matters with the state subject to congressional supervision. And for a long time, you know, we had a series of Voting Rights Act, Acts, rather, beginning in 1965, and then they were renewed consecutively, usually every five or every seven years. But in a, in a decision several years back, the Supreme Court decided that the triggering mechanism for this law was no longer really relevant. Uh, the triggering mechanism, it, it applied basically to those states where and I forget if, if the percentage was 50%, but 50% or less of the people traditionally came out to vote uh, and the like. And they were largely concentrated in Southern states, there was a district or two in Arizona or elsewhere. And the Supreme Court decided, well, you know, the Congress did adequate work in, in establishing why those were good benchmarks in 1965, but maybe not so much in 2010, 2015. And so, states no longer have a free clearance requirement which might have kept them from you know doing what they otherwise would do and it's further complicated by covid you know what what i think a lot of us forget is that we probably had the most liberal voting in terms of who was qualified and how you would vote in the last presidential election than we've ever had uh, you know, they were mailing ballots to people. There was more early voting than usual. There were drop boxes. And most of these uh, benefited Democrats who generally benefit when more people vote. And Republicans sort of pushing back, well, you know, the Constitution doesn't guarantee there'll be a drop box, doesn't guarantee early voting, doesn't necessarily guarantee voting by mail. And so you have a lot of conflict there and then there's additional conflict, which might ultimately prove to be more important, which is who ultimately counts the ballot. You know, in, in the last election, you know, you still have an ex-president who I think falsely is claiming that he was robbed, you know, that the election was stolen from him. And apparently there were attempts in six or seven swing states to name alternate, you know, slates of electors and so I think there's some concern about, you know, where is where is that control at the state level? And my, my own attitude is it's a little bit like gerrymandering. I would prefer to have a nonpartisan body determining which votes count than someone who says all the Democratic votes are going to count or somebody who says I'm only here to count Republican votes. Uh, but, you know, each each side is sort of jockeying for you know, their own position. Well, we are starting to get a couple calls. I want to go to the phones Good. here. Uh, Rich, you are live on open line. Go ahead if you can hear us. Yes, ma'am. First thing, I'm an independent voter. Uh, I'm kind of confused and puzzled. I don't know. I'm up here in the sticks, but uh, you need to show, in my opinion, or to be able to, or, or to have to show identification to vote. Uh, from what I gather is there was roughly, what, 80-something million that voted for Biden. Uh, I don't think, obviously, people are getting out and voting. Uh, and they're saying voter suppression. Uh, they're talking about the ID. you got to show ID. I understand it. Like I said, I mean, I think it ought to be law. Uh, they're saying, well, some people ain't got ID. They're poor. Well, if they're on public assistance, I think they have to have, you know, ID to do that. But... That's pretty much about all I got to say, other than, you know, if you go in a liquor store, buy liquor, you got to have ID. But <laughs> I thank y'all. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. We appreciate you calling. <laughs> I like that connection. Sometimes I think you need to get liquored up to vote. At least in some elections, <laughs> they used to say you had to put a clothespin on your nose before you went into the voting booth. But uh, maybe having a swig would <laughs> depends would on be how you somehow. look at it. I mean, any you, you response know, to what he's saying? Yeah. Point. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the 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 primary Republican argument has been that you know we need to make sure that the people who are voting are actual voters, and in most cases. That means actual citizens. Um, there's not a lot of evidence. You know, the studies that have been done do not suggest that there is very widespread fraud. I mean, you can find a vote or two here or there. 
Uh, and in fact, in this last presidential election, most of the recounts where it was alleged that, you know, Trump had been cheated, he actually did, uh, Biden actually got more votes in the recounts than he did in the original. But, you know, you know, I, I, I'm sympathetic to Rich in, in, in saying that, you know, we do need to make sure that the people who are voting are true voters. Um, but he, as he points out, there are some, you know, that those, for example, who don't have driver's licenses, uh, maybe older people, probably not as likely to have a government issued ID. And so, that, you know, some people who probably should vote, it, it makes it's a bigger obstacle than it would be probably for you or for me. We are going to take a quick break and we will be back with more open line and your phone calls right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> 